So these concrete steps are quite a mess and it can be very expensive to have somebody come in and redo all of these steps. And in all intents and purposes, that would probably be the best way to go is just to remove these completely and pour all new concrete in. But I'm flipping a home. I don't have the, the budget to be able to do that. Um, and plus we're in a backyard that there's like all these steps to get up to. And really, I just want to repair this so that it can last, you know, quite a long time for somebody to be able to use this back door space. So I'm going to just basically patch all of this so let's get into it and show you how to go about doing that. So first off, you want to take off any loose concrete, anything that's going to flake off or fall off. You want to get removed. You want to power wash it. So power wash all the dirt off. I still have a little bit more cleaning to do. I got leaves and stuff on here, but I'm going to just basically do this step by step. So I'm going to pour this concrete pad over top of this existing one. Um, today and then the next day I'll put the next one and the next one so it's going to take several days to be able to get this complete but it's going to be a lot easier than buying expensive lumber to be able to go over top of this and really I have so many other things to do it's not a big deal just to do one step a day so first thing is is to get your first riser in place and what all you really are primarily looking for is about an inch overlay of concrete over top of the top of the step and then obviously making sure it pitches down. So in this particular situation, it's a much higher step than I would prefer. It's already at nine inches. We're gonna be probably about 10 inches for this first step. Um, but I don't wanna remove this whole thing. So I'm just, that's what I'm gonna go with. And the rest of the risers are approximately a normal step, nine inch risers. So. The first step is going to be a little bit higher than a normal traditional step. So if, you know, depends on where you live. If you, if the code doesn't meet this, then you might not be able to do this, but this was already existing. I'm just working with what I have. So I'm going to be basically for the first step, going to be adding a two by four on top to be able to get my pitch. And that's, that'll get me, and I'm going to make sure that when I do the concrete, everything's pitching towards the front. So the water doesn't sit in the back edge of the staircase. So this will be used as a screed to be able to level that out. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So I am gonna provide, make this step wider. So I'm gonna give myself a good two inches for the face of this and then around the side as well. So I'm basically expanding the entire footprint of each step all the way up. Uh, if you could get a couple inches, that'd be great. But the topping of this, just because I'm already so high, I'm only gonna have about an inch of concrete on top, which will work fine. We got this form that will take this off and clean things up and prepare it for the concrete. So the first thing I want to do is get some tap cons on here. So I'm going to make this so that the concrete has something to kind of grab into on the face. So I'm just going to put a bunch of tap cons in the front face of this. Okay, so 
Now they've got that all cleaned up, prepped, got our cap cons in everywhere. We're gonna go ahead and use some adhesive. This is a bonding agent to the existing old concrete. So you can dilute this to one part of each. So I highly recommend that because the stuff isn't cheap, but it will go a long way. So we're not gonna need much for each step. I'm gonna do this at each stage. So we'll just do a half a cup or a half a quart, I should say, and then a half a quart of water. And you wanna just mix that up. So this bonding agent is what's gonna really help bond the new concrete to it. So you just basically brush it in. And then you have to let it sit for about two hours. But this is a really important step for that concrete to bond properly. Otherwise it'll just kind of flake off. Bonding agent on there. So now we'll just get this into place. And we're going to anchor some blocks in here just to hold this into place. Okay, so about three hours later, we're ready to go ahead and pour it. What we're gonna be using is quickcrete. So it's a high strength concrete mix. It's not exactly my favorite concrete, but it has a, a really decently fine aggregate, which I think is important for these stairs. So we'll go ahead and mix it. Basically need three and a half quarts per bag or so and then what's really going to be helpful is that we're going to use a mud mixer to mix this this will allow us to get a little bit of a thicker consistency regular um, paddles don't usually mix concrete all that well so we'll go ahead and probably take about three to four bags probably to do this little step down here Okay, so you do want to make sure that you're kind of pitching down, which I have no problem there. So this stuff doesn't have a lot of cream to it, like a lot of the other concrete mixes to have. So you kind of just have to jiggle it around a little bit to get the, the cream to come to the top. But we're gonna let this sit for about an hour and then finish the concrete. So I forgot to turn on my audio for this, but really about an hour later, um, and I think in this situation it was actually two hours later that I went in ahead and started edging the corners. You want to use a concrete edger for that. Now pay attention to your conditions. If you have a lot of sunlight 
that's hitting the concrete pad, it's going to be a lot sooner for you to get on this and actually edge it. Um, you know, sunlight definitely likes to zap the moisture out of the concrete. Uh, so pay attention to it. But in this situation, it was pretty humid out. And I was able to, I mean, really it was almost two hours later by the time I was edging it. Now, the concrete was a, a fairly wet mix. So that's going to prolong the time period to do it. Um, but quickcrete, you know, it really isn't the best for finishing. Um, you know, it's really best to just go with a broom finish if you're going to use quickcrete like this. But the main reason I went with this, again, is because it had the fine aggregate and can go over top of concrete steps like this very easily. So then right after I do that edging, and then I'm just going to take my little brush and create uh, some brush marks on the steps. This will make it slip resistant. And again, um, quickcrete is not the easiest to finish to a nice smooth surface. So using a brush is going to make it look pretty nice. Okay, then any gaps that you might have, you can fill in with a little bit of uh, spray foam to fill in that gap. Just to keep that, keep that mortar from coming, seeping from the edges. And then I did end up lowering this size here. Um, on a normal circumstance, I would not recommend that. Keep them all the same. Um, but just because this is kind of a backyard and it's not like, you know, I don't know. It just basically, I would get too high at the top here to be able to make this work right. So I'm making this, is this is gonna basically be seven and a half inches. Well, eight inches really by the time I'm done with the concrete. So 
basically I have three steps that are nine inches and then the rest are gonna be eight, you know. So again, uh, if you wanna be 100% accurate, make them all the same so that there isn't any tripping hazards there. Uh, but we're also gonna just go ahead and box in my corner hair and repair this at the same time. So basically same concept, just getting some kind of a ledger board on here. So I'll put some tap cons and just kind of put a, a side edge here. But again, I have a whole bunch of tap cons that I have all prepared here so that the concrete has something to grab into. So for structural vertical repairs like this on the sides of my curb here, I'm gonna use some structural repair made by Quickcrete. So this stuff is kind of a little bit stickier, makes it a little bit easier to be able to fill in these vertical sections. But the first thing you wanna do since this is old concrete, or even if it is new concrete, um, you really wanna use some concrete bonding agent on this and let it dry for a couple hours and then go do the repair. This really kind of opens up the pores and makes sure that you get a good bond with the vertical stuff to the actual old concrete. So you want to make sure everything's kind of clean and uh, dirt free. Uh, try to vacuum it up as much as you can. And then we're going to dilute this. We're going to make it about uh, half and half. So I'm only just mixing like a quarter of it and then just applying it onto the seams. 
So just saturate it and then we'll have to let this dry and then we can go ahead and use the actual mortar to repair it. But all these areas definitely need to be filled in or water will get in them during the winter, freeze and then cause a problem. So if you can try to eliminate the cracks, just do a little bit of maintenance. I mean, this is some pretty old concrete, probably a hundred years old. So it's not unlikely that you have to do this, you know, once a year, just try to fill in the cracks. This was a repair that we did before with just a little bit of concrete mix. And now we want to make it smooth and make it better, more uniform. And we'll do that with uh, structural concrete repair stuff. So I'm just coating this whole area. And I'm not too concerned about it getting on the existing concrete. It's not really that big of a deal. And then if you have any areas that you need to do better on your verticals here, like this is all new concrete here. I'm gonna fill that in to make it nice and smooth. So we'll just apply this adhesive on there as well. Okay, so you just want to mix this to a nice thick paste consistency. So let's start out with like maybe half a quart of water. You don't need to mix this all at once. I'm going to use a mixing paddle. Okay, so I got this a fairly fairly thick, kind of like a brick mortar almost. I just want something that's not gonna run out of the joints. So, let's go ahead and fill these areas in. Okay, so we'll let that set up for a little bit and then um, we'll just take a, a damp sponge and just kind of smooth this out so it kind of looks a little bit better. And then once we get that top form off, we'll do a final patch on some of these sides. So yeah, this stuff is definitely a lot nicer than um, just regular mortar because it just has a more thick consistency to it. Um, but most important thing is just trying to fill in those cracks eliminate water from getting in there and then freezing and then cracking uh, even more. So now we'll go ahead and do some of our final touch-ups. Again, we're gonna be using the structural repair type of mortar. This is a little bit more sticky, allows you to do the vertical surfaces uh, pretty easily. So we're gonna mix up just enough that I need. 
and you just basically want to eye up your mixture and try to make it uh, you know kind of like a, a fairly thick consistency. So only about 10 minutes later, we're going to take a sponge and just wipe all the excess off the steps and just kind of pull it a little bit so it kind of looks, so it looks nice. Okay, so that, take care, that takes care of these steps. Um, now I could have been a lot more precise with my work here and I could continue to go over it with more of that structural mortar to make this look really 100%. But I really found that this is probably the easiest way to go about doing a whole bunch of different um, steps without having to spend all the money to form it and have to order concrete. It becomes really stressful when you're doing this all at once. Um, but for this, this is gonna be great for uh, the new homeowner and it's going to last years to come. So thanks so much for watching my videos. I know this is a little bit outside of my bathroom remodeling type, um, but this is a house that I'm flipping. I just figured I'd share everything that I'm going, uh, of what I'm doing, because this is really where I started bathroom remodeling. I was doing a whole bunch of different home renovation projects. I definitely recommend that for yourself if you ever plan on doing a bathroom. Make sure that you're doing other home improvement projects first. Get your skills and mechanical abilities intact in before you tackle on something like a bathroom remodel. But hey, check out my courses down below on bathroom remodeling. I step you through step by step on how to go about remodeling a bathroom. So, all right, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.